One of my favorite things about working on games is that you're really designing something that's meant to be explored, something that has depth that will last a thousand replays. I'm Zach Gage, I'm an artist, and I also make video games. Spell Tower is my most successful game that I made. But Spell Tower has probably been downloaded somewhere north of 500,000 times, which is pretty crazy. The best movies you can view a million times and you keep finding new things. The best paintings you can look at a thousand times and you keep seeing new things. The thing about games is that you're trying to design a system that's so interesting and deep that you can't really ever understand it, but you're trying to design it. So you're trying to make a thing that you yourself could never understand, which is like a really weird kind of goal. There are so many embedded systems in our lives that are deep and nuanced and complicated that we just operate under. A lot of my art is usually just sort of figuring out how to just question those systems. I always was interested in making things long before I was interested in making games. I was into looking at how things worked and sort of dissecting all the problems and putting them back together in a way that, that made them work better or work differently. That's just really fascinating to me. I had this really sort of important moment in my own growth back in 2009. I made this small game called Lose Lose, which was basically a Space Invaders style game where there are aliens and you can shoot at them. But unlike a normal video game, each alien was associated with a file on your hard drive, and if you shoot the alien, it would permanently delete the file. So it was kind of this way to say these things can be powerful in a way that we're not necessarily giving them credit for. What was so fascinating to me about it was that not only did people play it, but more people engaged with that game than with anything else that I had done up to that point. And it made me realize that games are interactive conceptual performance art where the performer is the, the player. For example, one of the works I did a couple years ago was this piece called Hit Counter. It's basically sort of like a, a blank wooden box that says this artwork has been visited X number of times, and then the X is replaced by a number counter. The idea was to take web counters and bring it into the physical world. Not to say that web counters are good or bad, but to ask this question about the metric of popularity. The idea is to build something that's deep and interesting and makes people think and makes people think right away. So that when they're engaging with it, they're not engaging with it in a really light way, they're engaging with it in a deep and compelling way. With games, it's sort of all about creating a system that's so simple that anybody feels like they can understand it, but then when they actually get into it, they start to realize how deep and complex it is and how much they really don't understand, but want to continue trying to understand. Thank you.